the voice. Are you wandering in the wilderness? Or are you a voice in the wilderness? Welcome to the Revival Cry Podcast. This is your host, Eric Miller. Isaiah 40 verse 3 says, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. The goal of this podcast is to encourage you to use the voice God has given you to make Jesus famous. Every week we will share principles from the Word of God, interviews, and encouragement in order to strengthen your voice. Thank you for joining me today, and now here is today's podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome our very own Ati Casey Miller to share the word of God. <laughs> God bless you. Good morning, my own buntag. The reason I have a phone, a computer, and a Bible is not because there's anything specific on them. It's because the Lord has told me that we're going to go in all different directions and I'm going to be ready. So I'm going to be just as surprised as you are this morning. How about that? All I know is this. The Lord said, the word is in the people. So we're going to start right there. Somebody out there, the Lord has been speaking such a deep word to you. I'm not talking about just personal words, only for yourself. But you have something, and it's more than one person. I'm asking you, if the Lord is sharing something with you, it's a theme. It's something that's on your heart, it's burning and it's heavy and you know it keeps repeating in your heart. It keeps repeating. Itasan kamot, if that's you. Okay, somebody is hearing from God. Okay, we're gonna start here, okay? Because there's more that are hearing from God, but the thing is, did you notice when you walked in the door what was hanging on the wall? There were some paintings. Does any, did anybody notice that? Okay, what did it say on the paintings? My sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. What is a sheep? How do you know you're a sheep? Are you a sheep? A sheep is somebody who is under the care of the shepherd. Who's the shepherd? Jesus. Are you under Jesus? Are you in his, in his group, in his team? Then you're a sheep. And if you're a sheep, then you hear his voice. Say, I am a sheep. I am a sheep. And I hear, I hear his voice. Now, some of you don't believe that yet, so we're going to start right here because you're the first ones to raise your hands. You ready? Uh, the Lord has been spoken to me about he is full of grace and we receive his um, abundant blessing, abundant grace, so we could able that to share to other people. The Lord is full of grace. Very good. Ikauna? The Lord uh, speaking to me always like having intimacy, digging in His presence, you know, secret place. Grace and intimacy. With, that wasn't hard, right? Dililisod? Not hard? Who else thinks they can do that? God's spoken to you. The Lord has been uh, keep repeating it. Uh, for a few months already, like maybe a year, to be a forerunner with uh, bringing the, a, a torch. To be a forerunner, to go ahead. Who else? What's God saying? Go ahead, Kuya Bobby. I believe God speaking to me three weeks ago about forgiveness, ma'am. Forgive one another. <laughs> you could preach for weeks on that right there. What else? Um, uh, sa kuwa kay Romans 10, 10 17, uh, so faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. So, katong Friday lang ni siya. So, ang, uh, dili lang po ko naga, uh, naga share para sa tanan, para po sa kuwa ni. So, lisod kayo makadungog sa gino if kusog kayo ang world. Kinanglan na to i lower or shut down ang world. Then, let's make the Lord famous. That's good. That's good. So for the uh, English speakers, when the world is so loud, it's hard for us to hear what the Lord is saying. So we have to shut that stuff down so we can hear what the Lord is saying. Because that's how we get our faith, is by hearing in the secret place and in the intimacy of the, with the Lord. Okay, one more. Who else is hearing from God? Something. Ready, Koya? Go ahead. Uh, this happened two weeks ago uh, during the uh, Sunday service. Uh, the Lord's spoke to me and said I am who I am repent I am coming soon 
I am who I am, repent because I'm coming soon. You believe Jesus is coming soon? Yes. Yeah, okay, so let's review. Grace and? Intimacy. Intimacy with Jesus, then? Forerunner, and then the next one over here? Yes. Forgiveness, and then we went to? Hearing the voice of God, shutting down everything else, and? Repentance, I'm coming soon. Wow, good memory, good job, hallelujah. So today, I really want us to lean in to the voice of the Lord. Lean in, and how do you do that? I think he was kind of hitting on it a little bit there. There are so many different voices, and we do hear them all. We hear voices all over. But Jesus said that his sheep would be able to distinguish which voice to follow. There's a difference between hearing a voice and following a voice. Sample, if one of my children is, mom, mom, most of the time I can tell which one is my kid. How many parents can usually tell which one is your child? Usually, as sometimes you can, but usually. Usually there can be a room full of kids, they're all screaming, but when your kid screams, you're like, whoa, wait, right? Because you can hear all the voices, but you distinguish which one to follow. The same goes for us, and we're, we're in a store, right? So like we're in a store or something, and I go, hey kids! Of course, no one here says, hey kids, so it works out in English, it works well for me, but even in the US, say I say, hey kids! If I say, hey kids, my kids know that it's me. And there may be other moms, other dads calling their children, but they know that it's me. The other way they know it's me is because I know their names. Are you drawing the parallel? The father knows your name, he calls your name, and you may hear all kinds of other things, but the voice that you follow is the voice of the Lord. The key to this generation is a fight for our attention. It's a fight for where we're looking and where we're focusing. That is the big fight for this generation. Okay, so we're gonna do a little sample. Let's see, I need somebody to be Jesus. Who's a good, you're a good Jesus, come be Jesus. All right, so, oh, 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 yeah, come be, yeah, that's the, here, here's Jesus, okay. Oh. <laughs> all right, so you can't cheat, no cheating, all right? Here's the game. Everyone is gonna close your eyes, do not cheat. Now my Jesus here, as I'm talking loud so that you can't tell where his footsteps, he's gonna walk to somewhere in the room, but you close your eyes, don't look at him. He's gonna walk to somewhere in the room, just walk somewhere to the, in, anywhere in the room, he's just gonna walk. Keep your eyes closed, don't open your eyes. Keep your eyes closed, and when he's finished, I'll let you know, but don't open your eyes. Now, with your eyes still closed I want you to point where my Jesus is in the room point to where you think my Jesus is in the room okay keep your finger there and open your eyes <laughs> oh <laughs> how many of you were right a few were right okay okay how many of you were absolutely wrong yeah so we have about a 50-50% chance we are either right or wrong. Okay, now let's try it again. Eyes open, wide open. Now Jesus, go somewhere in the room, anywhere. Anywhere, just go somewhere. Okay, now with your eyes wide open, I want you to point to where Jesus is. And if you get it wrong, we're gonna pray for you to see. <laughs> okay, raise your hand if you were right. Yay! Okay. Salamat kayo, Jesus. Let's give Jesus a hand. <laughs> what is my point? What is my point? Uh, for us to be able to show the world where Jesus is, we have to know where Jesus is. And the only way that we know where Jesus is is for our eyes to be fixed on him, to be open. When our eyes are focused on anything else, our eyes are somewhat closed. There's, there's something between us like this. It's as if something's standing between us. Now, if he went to stand over there, 
and this big wall was in the way, I, even with my eyes open, I can't see, right? These are the distractions that keep us from showing other people where Jesus is. You know, earlier today, Sierra and uh, David and I were talking about some of the Jehovah's Witnesses and how funny they are that sometimes as runners, they will position their little thing that they're, you know, their little witness table by the running area. And we're all thinking, you're in a 5K and you're just gonna be like, oh, hold on, let me just see if I could, could I talk to you about God? It's as if they really don't wanna talk to you about God, but they're trying really hard to put something on, you know, their religious marker to show that they've done something, so now God's gonna like me because I'm doing something. But do they actually see Jesus? No, they don't. They don't see Jesus. They're looking to try to do something to prove to God that they are good. They want to prove that they're good and that's the only purpose of what they're doing. Because they actually believe that the more good things they do, the more little marks they get and the better chance they have of having God's favor. I wonder sometimes if we actually do that too. Now, I want us to reach the lost. I do. That's, that's absolutely imperative. We have to reach the lost. But we are not going to win a world by doing it like the Jehovah's Witness, by trying really hard to prove to God that we're good enough or that we can do this. Maybe even we can post it on the 24-7 prayer chat, right, because I did something. Now I feel good about myself or whatever. If our purpose is that, how are we any different than Jehovah's Witness or the Roman Catholics or anyone else who's trying to earn God's favor? Are we earning God's favor or are we w walking in his favor? And because we have his favor, that is why we share the good news. Does that make sense? So this morning I was reading in John, I told you the Lord had me all over. He's like, okay, I'm going to go this way, then we're going to go that, and go this way. Oh, by the way, while we're doing this, can you take that pad of paper, Hannah? So we may or may not end up using this because just as I told you, I'm just downloading as it comes. I'm hearing this for the first time too. So she's going to take these out and everyone is going to get one piece of paper or you could pass the book around or whatever. As long as everyone gets one, don't write on it. Unless by the end of my message, I tell you nothing to do with it, then you can take it home and it's yours. We'll see if the Lord lets us get to this or not. We may or may not. I'm in John chapter 16. Jesus is talking about the Holy Spirit. Now in Acts 1.8, we know that when the Holy Spirit comes, what does the Holy Spirit do? You will receive power. Power for what? Power to be witnesses, power to share the gospel, to live out the gospel. That's what you receive with Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a lot more than only just power to witness. Holy Spirit is our advocate. He's a lawyer who fights on our behalf. He's the spirit of truth. He leads us into all truth. Like I said, I can't share truth unless I know truth. If I'm not convinced of the gospel, how can I convince anyone else? It's just a game, it's a rhetoric game, if I'm not convinced. Jesus said, verse, chapter 16 of John, verse eight, when he, the Holy Spirit, comes, he will prove the world to be wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin because people do not believe in me. We're in John 16:10 about righteousness because I am going to the Father where you can see me no longer, and about judgment because the prince of this world now stands condemned. Let's go back to verse eight. The Holy Spirit is gonna prove that the world is wrong about these three areas. The world is wrong about what they think about sin. When you say the word sin, people automatically think about murder, um, lying, stealing, are those things wrong? Yes, but what is it that Jesus actually said was the number one sin? Read on. About sin because people do not believe in me. If I asked you what's the, what's the greatest sin, 
of all the world, you, you probably would say something like murder or like violence or there'd be all kinds of things that would come out. But according to this, not believing in Jesus is the primary sin because without faith in Jesus, you're susceptible to any kind of sin, anything that the enemy brings your way. So about sin, because they do not believe in me. So we can work really hard to try to be sin free. But every religion works hard to be sin free, except for Satanists, you know, then they work really hard to be sinful. But most religions work hard to be sin free. That's no different. What's the difference with us? We don't work really hard to be sin free. Are you okay with that? If you work really hard to be sin free, you will always find yourself frustrated. You will always find yourself a failure. The key to being sin free is faith in Jesus. He is the sacrifice for our sins. He is the one who sends the Holy Spirit and empowers us. So the world is wrong when it comes to sin. The Holy Spirit is gonna prove the world wrong when it comes to sin. The world says, the main thing is stop doing drugs. The main thing is stop being mean, whatever it is. That's not the main thing. The Holy Spirit is gonna prove that the main thing is put your faith in Jesus and he will help you to be free from sin. Does that make sense? The second thing the Holy Spirit is gonna prove that the world is wrong about is about righteousness. He says, because I'm going to the Father where you can see me no longer. So Jesus is not actually, an, by the way, if this is your first time, that's not really Jesus. What's your name? Uh, Nash. He knows his name. Nash is his real name. Pastor Nash is not Jesus. And by the way, neither is Kibaloi. Neither is any other flesh person that you have ever seen on this planet because Jesus said he was going to the Father where you could see him no longer. So wait, didn't you just tell us to find Jesus and to see him? How do I see him if I can't see him? You're not making any sense. The job of the Holy Spirit is to reveal what Jesus does to our spirit eyes so we can see with our spirit eyes what our physical eyes cannot see. So Jesus said because he was going to the Father and you wouldn't be able to watch the demonstration of how he lived righteously anymore that the Holy Spirit would be the one to show you how to live righteously. That's the second thing. So first, Holy Spirit is proving the world is wrong about sin. You wanna be sin free? The main thing is faith in Jesus. Number two, the world is wrong about righteousness because all these other people that we look to um, Mahatma Gandhi, he was so, you know, good, good per, that's not righteousness. Who else might, might be thought of as righteous according to the world? Mother Teresa, was she perfect and righteous? Might have been great, she might have been a wonderful person, but was she perfect and righteous like Jesus? No, not at all. Anyone else that you could think of that somebody says, oh, that's the sample of righteousness, that's a good person. Who? <laughs> okay, I don't even know that. Yeah, John, John is in, in another planet. I don't know. What <laughs> you know, anybody that you look at and you say, wow, that person's so amazing. They're so good. That's a good person. The Holy Spirit is going to prove the world that they're wrong about what's righteous. Jesus is the only one that's righteous. The he'll also prove that the world is wrong about judgment. When we think about judgment, we think about God judging people. And is God going to judge people? Yes. <laughs> he will. He will judge people. It's not okay that Hamas went in and raped and murdered and mass. It's not okay. And if they don't repent, God will deal with that. He will deal with it. God will judge unrighteousness. And I have no problem saying that. But... Who's the ultimate one who's going to be judged according to what this scripture says in verse 11, John 16, 11? Because the prince of the world now stands condemned. Who is the one that is ultimately condemned? The devil. God doesn't want to condemn humans. He wants to condemn the devil. That's it. 
That's all he wants. He doesn't want anybody to perish, but all to come to repentance. Is that in the Bible? And Jesus said in John 3, that he didn't come into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Today, I feel like there are those of you in this place that love the Lord and want to follow Jesus, but you've got some things mixed up when it comes to righteousness and to judgment and to sin. You live under a weight that you are always in sin and have always done something wrong, that you always feel like it's never good enough. I'm I'm confronting a, a Roman Catholic and even Muslim stronghold over this area. You need to recognize strongholds. The church in this area is going to feel the tension of the strongholds of religions that are around us. Roman Catholicism tells you that you're never really good enough. You're always having to go to someone else and tell all the things you've done wrong and you'll go back and do more wrong and you'll go back back and forth. It's, it's a roller coaster kind of life. Islam is the same way. I'm never good enough. So maybe if I blow myself up and kill a bunch of people with me, Then God will love me and I'll get into heaven because in all reality, I know I can't be good enough, so maybe this is my only way. That's what Islam says. You think, oh, I don't think that. I don't think that if I blow myself up and, you know, that I'm going to go to heaven. I don't think. But I wonder how many of us live our lives like we are always condemned, that we're not good enough and God hasn't called me, God hasn't chosen me, Isaiah 61 doesn't apply to me. Go there, Isaiah 61, which is where Jesus took his sermon from. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me. I want you to say that. The spirit of of the sovereign Lord is on me. But me, God, don't you realize I'm shy? Don't you realize I'm not gifted? Don't you realize the struggle with this one sin that I've had for so many years that I'm trying so hard? And the key word there is trying so hard. That's not a key word, key phrase. Trying so hard, that's three words. If we're not trying and we don't care, that's different. But when we're trying and we love the Lord and we're wanting to walk in righteousness, but we still feel condemned all the time, it's not going to help. It's not going to help. Okay? If your sin is lying and you find yourself covering your, your, your life with lies, probably you're ashamed of something. And the reason you're lying is to cover your shame. So if constantly you feel like don't lie don't lie don't lie and then you keep lying all it's going to do is build more shame more shame means you're going to lie more it doesn't work don't lie it does not work for that person so what does that person need to know that's not who you are what does the holy spirit say about you what does he say the father says that the holy spirit has anointed you by faith Remember what he said before, I'm going to prove the world is wrong. The world is, tells you that try really hard to be good and religious. But that's not what God is saying. He's not saying try really hard to be good and religious. He's saying put your faith in Jesus and stay in the journey. Just stay in the journey. And he will work those things out. I'm not sure the exact location of this, but you all remember the story of Jesus in the desert, right? Right? where he was led to the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Maybe someone can find that for me while I'm talking. Oh, it's it's twice. Yeah, it's twice. I'm going to go to the Luke one, but I think you're right. It's also in, in Matthew as well. All right, so we're on Luke 4. It's on page 882. <laughs> okay, anyways. Um, so Jesus goes into the wilderness, and right before that if you kind of look a little bit back in john chapter or i'm sorry luke chapter 3 jesus goes to be baptized by john you remember that when he's baptized he comes out of the water and this dove comes down 
And then he hears a voice, and the voice says, what? This is my son, and I'm pleased with him. Whose voice was that? God the Father. God the Father said about Jesus, this is my son, and I'm pleased with him. And then he just stopped talking. That's all he said. He just stopped talking, period. Done. Then Jesus is led into the wilderness. Are you with me? So Jesus is in the wilderness now. He's been led to the wilderness, and the last thing he heard the Father say was, you are my son, and I'm pleased with you. That's the last thing he heard the Father say. Here he is in the wilderness. He's fasting for 40 days. How many of you love to fast? Okay, so some of you are either lying or, yeah, I saw a couple of hands go up. Either you're super spiritual or you're lying. Let me tell you, I have a love-hate relationship with fasting. I love what the Lord does, but I love food. And it is hard to fast. I'm the, I am the worst. I'm like, seriously, after like a couple of hours, I'm already going, oh, am I going to make this? Am I going to make it, you know? Like, I remember I fasted one time for like a while, like several days, and <laughs> I'm pretty strong. And my family knows every morning I get up and I work out. I'm not, I'm not a whiner. I'm really not a complainer. I was, I was very, very sick for many, many years, and I'm very appreciative to walk in health. So I wake up in the morning, and I hit the ground, and I start running. Well, this is me fasting, okay? In the corner of the couch, with my knees up like this, and a pillow in my face going, <laughs> Lord, I don't can't do it. That's me. That was me. Okay, after several days, I'm literally, no, it's that bad. It was that bad. I was in the corner thinking, what a pitiful mess. Jesus fasted for like 40 days. I wasn't anywhere close, not even close. But the Lord did meet me. I did make it. His power did come on me, and I did make dinner for my family, and no one knew that happened until after I told them. So praise the Lord. That was the grace of God. Anyways, Jesus is fasting 40 days. So the devil comes to him, and in verse 3 of chapter 4, Luke 4, 3, you know, it was the end of this fast, and he's pretty hungry. The devil said to him, if you are the, if you are the son of God, if, wait a second, what did God just tell him he was? God told him he was his son. Now the enemy is coming to test the very word of the Lord that was just given to Jesus himself. And as a man, not as God, as a man, he had to uh, resist temptation as a man under the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, wait, hold on. Let's finish verse 3. The devil said to him, if you are the son of God, tell this stone to become bread. If you are the son of God, then you can give yourself something to eat and let's just move on. Was it about something to eat? It wasn't about the something to eat. It was about the if. It was about the if. If you are the son. Wait, what? You gave your life to Jesus? Now you think you're some kind of like holy thing? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You are a holy thing. You gave your life to Jesus, and now you think you're just going to go to heaven like that? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You are just going to go to heaven just like that. If. And Jesus answers, he says, man will not live by bread alone. And if you see that little, some of you have that little symbol right there that says go back to where it came from. And let's see where it came from. Deuteronomy. This little tiny letter is so small. What is it? Letter E? Oh, my goodness. Deuteronomy 8.3. That is little. Do you guys have a little letter on yours that tells you a cross-reference where that came from? So when Jesus says something that he takes from the Tanakh, which is the Old Testament, when he takes something from there, you should go back and find out where he got it from. What's the end of it? Man will not live by bread alone, but by but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. If you are the son of God, 
I'm not going to live by bread alone, but I'm living off of every word the Father says. What did the Father just say? You are my son. So what is Jesus saying? He's saying, I don't really even need food right now, physical food, because I'm literally living off of this word that the Father just spoke to me over a month ago. 40 days, over a month. And God said to him, you are my son and I'm pleased with you. And it's been a month since he heard the Father say that and he's still living off of it. So when the enemy comes and says, if you are the son of God, he says, oh, I don't even need your bread because I'm living off what my father said to me. My father told me a month and 10 days ago that I was his son and I'm still his son. My father told me a month and 10 days ago that he was pleased with me, so he's still pleased with me. That's who I am and that's what I live off of. It's not that he spoke a month and a half ago and now I've read Facebook for a month and I've listened to what everyone else says for a month and I've watched TV for a month and I've believed everyone else's stuff. No, I'm eating off of what the Father said to me even though it was a month ago when he said it. I'm living off of every word the Father says. Living off of God's word means that every single day we are turning down, shutting down the noise, right? Shutting down the other voices, shutting down what anybody or anything has to say to you. And you recognize that the Father, what He says about you is the only thing that matters. What the Father says, that He has called you, chosen you, and appointed you. Appointed you that you would bear fruit, not that you would try to earn His favor, but that you're walking in such favor that you just are overflowing with his goodness everywhere that you go. You can't help it. It's just part of who you are. You're getting filled and filled and filled because the Father says this. Are we living off of what he says about us? What are you eating, spiritually speaking? No, I'm not gonna go on the health thing today. Right, Haley, because she's tired of hearing it. <laughs> What are we eating? Are we eating what Facebook says, Instagram says? Are we eating what our friends say? Spiritually speaking, what are we eating? And if we will eat healthily what the Father says about us and live off what the Father says, we will be fruitful. We'll automatically be fruitful. We'll lead people to Jesus because we're so full of Jesus. Everyone close your eyes for a minute. Father, I just thank you for revealing your truth to our hearts. And Lord, I pray where there's things that we've lived off of that are not true, the Holy Spirit, that you would reveal to us the truth of what you say. Lord, we don't need to live off anything anybody else says. What you say matters, and sometimes you could just speak one word, and it transforms our lives. And today I'm asking that you would bring revelation to these sons and daughters and anyone in this place who doesn't know you, that they would come to know you as a son and daughter and that you would empower your sons and daughters to hear your voice and to allow you into those places where we've believed lies that have held us down, things that we thought were doing the right thing but we're so frustrated and so stressed out because we're just trying so hard and it's really that you want to set us free by simple faith. So I'm going to ask you to get that piece of paper that I gave a little earlier. <laughs> and we're just going to kind of do like a real quick exercise here. We're going to ask the Lord to show us, are there things that I've believed as the enemy has spoken to me or other people have spoken to me, things that I've believed about you that are really not true at all? For example, maybe you were raised in a, in a church that loved the Lord, but somehow was lacking the love and the power of God, or maybe they were lacking the holiness, whatever. And so your perspective of God is not right in those areas. Maybe your focus is always on, I've got to do good, do good, do good, and you feel condemned just all the time. Or maybe your focus is the other extreme, I can do whatever I want, and God loves me, and... Okay, so I just want you to ask the Lord just real quick. And if there's something like that, 
that you feel that you've believed that is not really truth. I want you just to write, that, write down that lie. Write it down so you can see it. I'll give you an example from my own life. My struggle was God is always mad. And there's different reasons people feel these ways. A lot of times it's because of your parents. Maybe your parents were very angry people. Maybe they were um, abusive, something like that. And maybe you project those images onto God without even knowing it. And for me, I think without even knowing it, I projected some images of God just always being, it's never good enough, he's never pleased. I just projected those images. It could be your parents, it could be things you just, in life, you know, from teachers, whatever. If you have something like that, just ask the Lord. I'm gonna talk for a minute, but go ahead and ask the Lord just on your own. Ask the Lord, is there, is there something I've believed about you? Maybe it's been mentioned, maybe it hasn't, but is there something I've believed about you that's not truth? It's just not really who you are. I'm too extreme in one area. But God is holy. Yeah, God is holy, but that's not all he is. He's gracious. There's grace, remember that? Or maybe the other extreme, but God is gracious. Oh, but that's not all he is, he's also holy. Maybe you have an extreme Go ahead and write that thing down. That thing, everyone has one, okay? Don't, you don't act like you don't have a thing about God that you've struggled with. Everyone has one. Maybe your feeling is like God isn't interested. He doesn't really care. And you would say, oh, I don't believe that. But then when you go to pray for the sick, you don't believe that they're healed. You won't believe that they're healed if you believe he's not all that interested. Or maybe God's not reliable. Maybe I can't trust him. What is it the enemy has told me over and over again that I've been eating? It's like eating garbage out of the ground and I need to stop eating it. When it comes to the character of God, we'll get to ourselves in a minute about the character of God. Holy Spirit, show us, reveal any lies that we've believed because you are the spirit of truth. Hey, maybe you already wrote it down, maybe you haven't. But now go ahead and ask the Lord, I see this lie, I see this thing that I've heard from the enemy that I've believed maybe I've been eating and feeding off of it. Now give me the truth that is the opposite of that. And write that down. So if I've been believing God is always mad, I'm gonna ask the Holy Spirit for truth and maybe the Holy Spirit will then show me something like God loves me. It could be that simple. God loves me. I'm teaching you something here that you can also do at home, but we're just doing a sample here because this is how you live. This is nutrition class, guys, okay? Nutrition, spiritual nutrition class. This is how you live off of every word that proceeds from God's mouth. You recognize the unhealthy food, you reject it, and you receive the healthy things that the Lord says. Okay, so when you've been eating greasy potato chips and you're trying to live off of that and you're wondering why you have UTI every other week, it's time to switch, <laughs> okay? You've been drinking your Coca-Cola three or four times a day and then you wonder why your blood sugar is off the chart, it's time to drink some water, right? Nutrition class. All right, where are the lies? What is God's truth? Okay, if you've written down something that was a lie and then you wrote a truth with it, just take a moment right now and we're gonna pray to this effect, okay? I reject the lie that God is mad all the time and that it's never good enough, no matter what I do, it doesn't matter, God never, he never says he's pleased, he's always angry. I reject that lie. And I receive that I am loved by the Father, received, chosen, appointed by him to bear fruit, and he is pleased with my faith. And that I don't have to be all perfect all the time because he has been perfect for me. Do you see what I just did? Took the lie went before the Lord and said, I reject that. I will not eat that garbage anymore. 
but I choose to eat this. Go ahead and do it. Say what you need to say. Lord, I reject the lie that the Father is this way. And instead, I receive the truth that my Father is this way. He is abounding with love and faithfulness. Go ahead and use this paper as much as you need to because you can go back to it again. Okay, we're going to go to the next thing. We're talking about the character of God and many times the enemy will accuse God to us. He'll tell us things about God that are not true. He is the accuser. He not only accuses you, he accuses God. God's mad at you now. God's, he's not interested in your situation. You've been praying for so long, he's not gonna answer. That's accusation. The enemy accuses God, but he also accuses you. And it's related, it's very related, but let's look at this one. This is probably even more of an issue many times of how we see ourselves. How you see yourself is how you will behave. You'll act like who you think you are. That's why we have these kids that think, I don't know if you have it in the Philippines, but we have these kids in the US that they identify as a cat. And they take with them to school like these little litter boxes so they can go to the bathroom in litter boxes because they identify, oh yeah, oh yes, that's how crazy it gets. See, if you identify as something, you're gonna act like it. And you think that's crazy, I think that's crazy too, but let me tell you what else is crazy, identifying as a female when you're a male or identifying as a male when you're a female, you know that's crazy too. But the enemy will start with these things that are somewhat acceptable and it'll go down and down and down and down until you're a cat pooping in a litter box. You don't think it's gonna happen. It starts with lies that we believe. It starts with eating the wrong food. All right, let's go to this one. Jesus said, I will live off every word the Father says. And the Father said, I'm, I'm his son, and he's well pleased. So you can say, if I'm his son all day long, it doesn't affect me. I don't have to turn a stone to bread. I've got nothing to prove because the Father said, I'm a son. That's it. I don't have to prove anything to you if you are the son. Whatever. The Father said, I'm a son. I'm living off of that. Okay, how about you? Do you believe the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read this. When I read this, if you think, well, part of that is me and part of that is Kui Eric. And, or if you think, well, part of that is me, but really I'm, I can't do all of it because that's Pastor Buddy's job. Then you're not really listening to the full word of God about you because this is what God says about you. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on you. Because the Lord has anointed you to proclaim good news to the poor. If you don't believe that, your first lie on your piece of paper about yourself is, I don't believe the Spirit of the Lord is on me. He has sent you to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. When I read that, if you don't think that's you, that's your first lie that you're gonna write down. I don't believe I'm anointed. I don't believe the Spirit of God is on me. Okay, what other lies? Holy Spirit, show us. Go ahead and just close your eyes for a second. Holy Spirit, can you just show me the lies that I've believed about me? If I put my faith in you, what lies have I believed? What unhealthy food have I been eating? What words have I been eating about myself? And some of you are not only eating those words, but you're saying them to yourself. You need to repent for speaking ungodly words about a son and a daughter of God. Some of you wake up in the morning and the first thing you think is negative thoughts about yourself or about your spouse or about your children or about your parents. You're negative first thing. You're eating unhealthy. If that's you, write that stuff down. Write it down, come on. Let's get free. Why are you stressed out, full of anxiety, nightmares? Why can't you get rid of this sin that you keep trying so hard to get rid of? What are you eating? 
What are you feeding yourself? Are you living off of every word the Father says? If you're not, write those lies down. What do you hear? What do you say to yourself? The Lord can forgive me of everything but this one thing. This thing right here will stay with me and I'll be punished by it for the rest of my life. Is that true? Is the blood of Jesus good enough for everything but one sin? Okay, so the next step is this. We're gonna say out loud, I reject the lie that. Okay, and I'll, I'll give you some, one from me. Let's see, one, one that I've, I've worked through this stuff for years, so let's see if I can think of one that was a big one. Um, I reject the lie that I have to protect myself because if I don't, God will not. And I receive the truth that God is my protection and my shield and I can trust him. Okay, do you see how that works? Maybe you had some abuse or some situation in your life that makes you feel that same way as well. Maybe you feel like you gotta protect yourself if you don't, no one will. If, if you've been receiving that lie, your truth is God is my refuge and my strength, a very present help in trouble. Psalm 46.1. I know this is out of the box. Anybody else feel outside their box? Now some of you didn't finish that whole thing and you're gonna do it when you go home, but now I wanna ask you, who's hearing from God? Raise your hand if God's speaking to you. Raise your hand if God's speaking to you. Yeah, that's what it should always look like. You know why? Because God is always speaking to you. Individually, you are chosen, called, appointed, you are one who, who proclaims the good news. You are ambassadors of the kingdom. Individually, every single one who puts their faith in Jesus has the power to hear his voice and to speak his word. Every single one who has something the Lord spoke and you just, you know that it needs to be shared. Go ahead. Come on, that's what I'm talking about. Um, the Lord spoke to us sa, as a family or sa akin, uh, do not fear others daw. Just fear sa si Lord lang dapat na to. Kadlukan dili ang lain, ang war, ang earthquake na. Amen. Lord. Do not fear others. Woo, come on Jesus. We're getting free. I can feel it now. I was not feeling it before. Can y'all feel that? But finally. Doesn't it? All right, maybe we're not there yet. All right, hold on. That's all right. That's all right. Let's, well, we're going to get there. Come on, brother. From James 4.8. Uh, draw near to God and he will draw near to you cleanse your, ha cleanse your hands you sinners and purify your hearts you double minded so kung unsa man tong giingon sa inyo ha sa uban and actually sa kuapod pong naapod uh, actually naajud po din noon so from previous leaders then uh, gusto ni Lord uh, i-deliver mo na sa kuapod gusto ni Lord na i-deliver po ko na and just draw near to him. Lang daw. Draw near to him. And the Lord will draw near. And just repent. Sa to ang mga nabuhat na mali. So, kato. Amen. And he's letting the Lord heal him from religious injury. How many, how many have felt religious injury? Yeah. And unfortunately, that happens a lot in the church. But it's not from Jesus, right? What is the Lord saying, David? While I was writing stuff down, I felt like he was saying to walk in confidence. Yeah, that's good. That's the opposite of ulao. Okay, let's try that one. That's a good one. I am confident. I am confident. We're almost done. Lunch is coming. I get you. I get you. But listen, you got to get free. As much as you're hungry for food, be that hungry for the word and live off of what Jesus says. Stop eating junk food spiritually and wondering why you're not breaking through. Okay, I am confident. I am confident. Okay, someone else, what is God saying? Come on, raise your hand. I can see back in right there. Oh, yeah, come um, on. This was the lie that I believed before, and can I reveal the Lord's Um The lie is God is limited into human corrupted mind. I have limited God to the extent of kanang how how far my brain can go so i have limited him that way now the truth is i want you to know this god is limitless all powerful all knowing 
literally no rival, no equal, greatly to be feared among the assembly of the saints. As I have limited him, I was rebuked and I was convicted of this. And I'm glad that the Holy Spirit revealed it to me. And he's literally the maker and the creator of the heavens and the earth. So he will never be limited into your human corrupted mind. So that's the truth that was revealed to me. This is the devil says to me that you're not a child of God, but God says that I am a child of God. The devil is always telling me that you're not worthy to go in the church because you're a sinner. But God says to me, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1.9 and that is he answered me. Sa akin kay ano, God must have been tired of me. Pagkatapos ano, um, God will always be here for you, for I am faithful. Tapos sabi din yung isang lie is you're going nowhere. Tapos sabi ni God, I have a plan for you. Woo! Yeah! Come on, Jesus. Come on now. We're we're finally breaking through. There's a difference. I can feel it. I, I not only feel it, I see it. Uh, there is a saying that uh, a journey to a thousand miles begins with a single step. Isa ko sa a member there is a church na maulawon <laughs> to share the word of God. But God uh, promised us, God has given me not a spirit of timidity, but of power and sound mind. Thank you, Sister Kasi, for uh, giving me kaisog. You know what is kaisog? Boldness uh, to speak right now. And this is my beginning to share the word of God. Amen. Yes, Lord, we agree. We agree. Only the beginning. Just the beginning. Just the beginning. Who else? Come on. Come on. You can start younger. And you have a lot more years. Come on, let's do it. Right up there. If she can do that, it's your turn. Come on. Well, um, the, the enemy is telling me na, ma worried ka, ma worried ka. But the word said in Psalms 23, he said, I am your shepherd and I have all I need. So, you know, I'm still a new missionary and all that. And to be honest, I've been intimidated sometimes when I hear people say, you know, Japan is a missionary graveyard. And I can't tell you how many times I've seen this attitude of, you know, foreigners come here, you know, they, they leave after a few years. There's so many missionaries that have come and gone in Japan. And sometimes I feel a need to prove myself compared to other missionaries like in fire and stuff. I'm still new and figuring things out. And I'm very shy, I hate talking to strangers. So I'm like, Lord, you gave me the wrong job. How am I a missionary? But I felt like God was saying today that I carry his legacy, the legacy of Jesus to heal the sick and cast out demons and to be bold, even in a nation that is so full of shame and shyness. It's not just here, it's in Japan too. So, man, I am bold. Yes, I am bold. Bold as a lion. Who else? Come on. I know we're going a little while. Give me another one. Give me one more. Come on, Pastor. Okay. Um, I, I grew up as a kid very sickly. And because of that, uh, I was given to my grand, grandparents uh, to, for my grandparents to take, take care of me. And I have a lot of auntie and uncle to take care of me. So you know what? I want to tell you, uh, I have that fear to be sick all the time. When I feel sick, I was... I am so afraid. The word of God told me right now. He said, only one drop of Jesus Christ can make me well, can make me so healthy. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Now we have a feeding program. It meets five days a week. We only feed one meal those five days. Now what if the kids that we feed every other time when they're not eating with us, they were eating dirt from the ground. What if they eat something with us, but then they went out and just ate dirt? Would they still be healthy? No, so this is not like we do this today, yay, now we're fine and we go back to the same old thing. That's why I had you write it down. This needs to be a lifestyle. 
where you wake up in the morning and when those things come against you that were the old thoughts, the old food that stands in front of you, you purposefully reject it and you receive until it becomes a habit to eat healthy food. It is proven that if you're used to eating something, you will want to eat that. But when you get used to eating something else, you'll want to eat that. I'm a perfect example. I pretty much craved unhealthy food. If you gave me something with any spice, I rejected it because spices were not in my food. But now, having lived in Asia, I, you guess what I'm having over my house today? Come on, what are we having, sisters? We are having Indian food in my house today. And guess what? 20 years ago, you couldn't get me to take a bite of it because my mouth would burn off. But, but now I enjoy and I want that. You will start to like whatever it is you keep feeding yourself, but it takes time. Right, Sierra, living in Japan, it takes time. You have to adjust to a new diet. So spiritually speaking, if you are used to hearing and accepting lies, unhealthy food spiritually, you're going to have to purposefully reject and take the good food. It's going to be harder at first and much easier the longer you do it. Get yourself used to what God says. Thank you for listening to Revival Cry with Eric Miller. Please subscribe, rate, and write a review for this podcast on iTunes, cpnshows.com, or wherever you listen to podcasts. To find out more or partner with our missions work around the world, please visit us at revivalcry.org. I look forward to being with you next week.